In order to dive in further, we will do some detailed histogramming of cycles of these very frequently executed functions. And actually, we had decided before we do that, I will add a nice feature to my histogram code because otherwise I will drive myself and you crazy with finding the, the, the best pin width. So uh, let's uh, let's do the following. We will implement automatic bin width handling, and this will be done activated by setting the bin width to zero, which makes no sense otherwise. So we will get rid of this assertion here. We will allow the bin width to be set to zero. No, no more treats until this works. Um, we will also need, we will need, we will need an additional buffer. Actually, we could We could actually, if the number of bins is large enough, we could use the same buffer. But let's not be too smart about that now. Uh, let us add a second buffer. Thirty-two bit is enough for this. I think even less would be. No, no, it's not because we need to keep samples. <clears throat> Sample buffer and this buffer will have a size for which certainly 32 bits. Um, actually, I do not want to call it sample buff size because size is always something in bytes in my code. So sample buff element, so number of sample buff elements. And it's very long, but whatever. Um, okay, and we will insist <clears throat> that either, either, no, not either, that inclusive or that bin width is positive or at least if bin width is zero we at least want to have a sample buffer a sample buff and of a non-zero size because we will need to to store some samples in order to make a good judgment on the bin width. Second thing we need to do is <clears throat> whenever we get a sample, whenever we get a sample, Yeah, if the pin width is zero, it means that the pin width needs to be automatically um, adapted or decided or whatever. So we will collect the sample okay and now the interesting thing is here we can get a sample multiple times do we do we store the count 
separately. I think it will make us more flexible if we do that. So the sample buffer should actually store both samples and uh, both samples and counts. <clears throat> so let us insist that the sample buff elements is an even number. Okay, then we will actually need to store the sample buff. Um, I wonder if I should make that an array of structs, actually. I think that would make it nicer. Let's make, yeah, let's, let's do that. Histogram sample. I don't want it to call it histogram sample because it's not a simple sample. It can be a repeated sample. How should you call a repeated, a potentially repeated sample? Histogram sample. We call it a sample N. Yeah, it's not a beautiful name, but less. It is less confusing, I think. Than to call it just a sample. So here we will have the sample buff that is a point. A And we will have a n sample buff elements. And in the, the init will actually get a point of this type, which is which defaults to zero, so to null, and we'll get and 32 of sample buff elements, which also default to zero. So that will be the actual thing here. We do not need this odd thing, uh, even thing, because this will be an array of structs. Yeah, and let's, so let's assign that here. Okay, and now let's do the automatic thing. We, we actually, we need another thing. Um, we need a counter. Uh, we should or actually call this n allocated and n used as I do in other parts of the code. So, if we still have place, no, actually we will assert, we will assert that we still have place in the sample buffer. Oh, what do I write? I don't know what I'm writing. So, at, this will be an invariant, and this is actually guaranteed here because no, it's 
it's guaranteed yeah it's guaranteed here if if win width is zero then we know that ensemble of elements is greater than zero so it is greater than the use so at the beginning the invariant is true so it's also true here if we keep it true So very simply, we will add the sample to the buffer. So I will probably rely on the compiler to optimize this. Will I do that? Probably. It's very simple to optimize this. Um, and if if we now have filled up the buffer then we will decide on the bin width and in the end we will assert that either that we keep the invariant so either no either bin width is positive already or we still have space in the buffer for the next time That is our invariant, and it is true here and here. And we will actually return here because we cannot do this stuff yet, because we do not know the bin width, because as soon as you get here, you need to know the bin width. Okay, so now we have a full buffer of samples. And what we will do is we will, est I think we will probably estimate, should we estimate the median? and base things on that or should we estimate something like a percentile we definitely want to estimate a kind of percentile a uh, quantile And let's say, yeah, we can try that out. We will estimate a 90% quantile. This we have to implement soon. And this will also be very useful for other stuff if you have this histogram estimate from a sample buffer. Once we have that, We will calculate is a span of the full histogram. And let's say we do something like we divide this quantile by its quantile index or whatever you name call it. Um, and then this is probably a bit too too close. 
but let's add maybe 10% or 5%. Oh, okay, that is actually, the span should be calculated from the low, from the lower bound. So the distance of the, of the quantile value from the lower bound. This will be our span. And then the number of bins uh, with the fractional part will be, no, the bin with, the bin with fractional will be the span divided by the number of bins, right? And the number of bins should never be zero. Actually, it must be at least three because we always use one overflow and one underflow bin and we want to have at least one regular bin. And so there was I. <clears throat> So actually we should subtract two here, subtract two here because the overflow bins um, we divide by the number of regular bins. <laughs> that is our bin width. And then our actual bin width will be, I would say the ceiling of that, right? Probably. And just to be sane, Let's bump this up to one if it is not, so it should normally be at least one, but just to be, uh, sorry. Let's bump it up to one in any case. And now the last thing we must do is now we must actually add the samples we have so far buffered up. We must add them to the histogram proper. So we will run over our We will run over our sample buffer and we will let's call it inner. We will add sample. So 
we add, so we build up the actual histogram now. And afterwards, we will actuate that. So in order not to make the mistake of accumulating the samples again, we will set the used counter to zero because we have consumed them. Yeah, allocated we will not change. And this all of all of the rest here will become this inner this inner function. So we will also call that here. And this will become the inner that will become an implementation detail. Sorry, what, what am I doing here? And actually, no, my Bluetooth still works because Bluetooth is always failing on me. So this will be the inner one and this will go into an implementation namespace. Actually, in the end, I think we will always want to add samples first to the buffer um, because we will also use them for quantile estimations if we have only a low number of samples, I think. But whatever, this is not something we need to do today. Today, I just want to get this automa automated um, going on. So we still need to implement the quantile estimation. Histogram estimate. Double Q. And we will also implement the same we will implement the same algorithm that we have here. It shouldn't be too hard. And maybe we can reuse some of that. Maybe we can put some of that into Okay, here I called it P. Oh, actually, actually this, actually this is written so nicely already that it just depends on an order statistic function. That's great. And it doesn't use the bin bit anywhere, for example. No. So for, of course the order statistic one this uses the bin width, but we will we will change the implementation of that one and then we actually have a complete histogram quantile estimation that is immediately works. Okay, the n okay, this is something the n samples is needed. This we must take care of that we have this. The min sample and the max sample is needed. This is also something we will take care of. Okay, we need to refactor a bit here the the add inner because it currently does some things because you see all of this is independent from the bin width. The minimization and maximization, this this is something we can always do.
this is something we cannot do because we do not know the bin index. So let's let's put this at the beginning here. So first we do let's say first update statistics which do not depend on knowing the bin width because these we do always here we calculate the bin index the, yeah that is just a bin index calculation This is actually something we could refactor into an inline function, I think. Let's do that. What is index? Is a, uh, so histogram bin index. This will be an implementation detail. This let's also tell the comma, compiler, please, if you feel like it, inline this. Please, so this one, this. Histogram bin index, and this will just be why is why is my control p so slow that i always freak out on it probably i have a large file open and some buffer yeah i have yeah i have the debug log open um Can I close another buffer? No, this is doing the window. The problem is that the BD, the BD I have mapped, ah, but I can write it out and actually If I write it like this, it should be no problem. Yeah, now it's gone. Now, sh now it should be faster again. <clears throat> so we get the index here. That is nice. And then we actually just... So this only works if we have the pin width, of course. And then we add to the histogram. Yeah. So we call this add to bin. Add to bin. This is the only thing we delay until we have the bin width. This would be the nicest histogram I ever wrote. I wrote so many histograms, but this would be the nicest one so far. <clears throat> it's a red hole, but it will be a very nice one to have. Okay, so now for the estimation. Actually, we don't need this. This is the great thing. We don't need this. We can use the normal histogram quantile function. That's so cool. That is so beautiful. We can we can just use the quantile function here. That is so great. Um, actually, do I do the sample counting here? Yeah, I do the sample counting here. I do the sample counting here. That's fine. So we have the correct sample count already. 
And now I only need to implement the order statistic for the case that we do not have yet the bin width. <coughs> so that is fine, that is always the case. <coughs> Sorry. This we can always do min sample, max sample. And here, only here, here's only here we start to use the bins. So here we use the bins and we return the bin center, but so this will actually we will um, later do this also. While we are in the first and sample above allocated samples even if the bin width is known. I mean, actually we could do that right now. We could do that right now. Because what we really need here is that hist n samples. Oh no, no, no. We cannot check the n samples against the n allocated because mm, that's something different. What we can check is the n both used. Now we must be careful. Now we must be careful. Because <laughs> I don't like this so much. I think we need another counter. We need another counter. That is a bit of a downside of us storing here samples and their repeat count. Because the n samples that we have includes the repetitions. I mean, we could also set this used to one plus allocated to signify that we have an, an overrun of the sample of allocated. That could work. Because then this actually means we have only the samples that are in the sample buffer and no others. And then actually it should be rather easy to get the order statistic. Thank you. 
So oh, let's see how I paint it. Wait. This is also triggered for zero, right? So if we get here, we definitely have a positive number of samples. So then actually sample buff used would be already one. Yeah, this should be fine. We actually don't need the index here. So while the order is larger than the repetition count of this one, We do this. We increment the pointer here and we assert that the pointer is not getting out of range of the array. Actually the used range of the array should not get outside the used range. Yeah, and then we simply return sn sample. <clears throat> that should do the trick. That is in an exact order statistic. An exact order statistic while this is an estimate. So here we say um, find the exact order statistic. And here we say estimate the order statistic from the histogram. That are the two different cases. Note, if the accumulate the if the number of sample repeat count pairs added so far fits fits within the allocated sample buff then the returned order statistic will be exact. Otherwise, it will be an estimate based on histogram bin centers. fits in the allocated sample of then the returned order statistic will be exact. That is a very nice thing to have. That means we automatically get more exact quantiles for the histograms with a low number of samples if we supply a sample buffer that is. We find the exact 
if we get here we actually must always have a bin width otherwise something is wrong If we do not have a known bin width at this time, we die. Okay, I like that so much. So we, we have also implemented this. Uh, the only thing, the only thing is, Ah, I need to be more careful about the used and the allocated. Uh, this is still something that needs attention. We add. Hmm. Invariant. That is still true, that invariant. But, 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 I think we'll always do this. We add things. We add things here. But, if we don't have the bin width and we have enough samples. But then we do the automatic bin width estimation and then we add everything to the bins. But we do not do this here. We do not do this. And now we must be very careful. Actually, this one we always do if we have if we have space in the buffer. So if it is smaller, then we do that. If, yeah, so if we don't have a bin width and we have the full buffer. Then we do this whole thing estimation. We add what we have added so far. Hmm. I'm not sure how to structure this in the most, in the, in, the, in the cleanest way here. What I'm not sure is if we have a bin width already, but we are still in the first samples that fit in the buffer. Should we already add to the histogram pins? Probably, yes, it's probably the cleaner thing. 
So actually at this point, it's very easy. If we have a bin width, then we add to the histo. No, yeah, no. Yes, if we, yes, if we return here, then it is true. Uh, invariant, blah, 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 bin width. Let's also check this invariant here before we exit. So we do it uh, and then we add everything. This includes the new value that we just added before. This includes that. Now, the one thing left is that we must do here. is that if this was greater than or equal before already, then we didn't do this. So here it can be equal because we just reached the equality or because it was already equal before. If it was already equal before, so the buffer was already full, then we increment by one to signify that we are outside the range of what fits in the sample buffer. Otherwise, if we still have space, we add it to it. So here we can assert that the number of used ones is at most the allocated plus one. I think now it's complete. I think it is complete and correct now. There is only one thing. So if we have the hist bin width, we always add. The only the only thing is What do we do if we get to print the histogram that does not have yet a bin width? Because let's check everything else. Histogram bin index. This needs to assert that we have a bin width. Otherwise, this does not work. Let's document this as a precondition. This is also true for everything that calls this function. So for add to bin, add to bin is only called here. So 
so we can here we can also assert already here that's fine histogram add i think is correct let's play with that's a helper histogram show that that's the interesting case here let's for now put the assertion here let's look at the others histogram next frequent this uses the bins so this also needs a bin width because it uses the bins directly that is for for querying the the bins in decreasing frequency histogram mean doesn't need anything that's fine also the standard deviation doesn't need anything the bin center the bin center definitely needs the the bin width the order statistic is fine this has its tricks to yeah this only needs the bin width if it gets here to the estimate otherwise it doesn't need it so this is fine this is also fine fine the only thing is really the printing at the end so what i'm thinking is what we should have is a kind of Uh, histogram commit commit function so we will call that before the show wrong again histogram commit this will be a no op if we already have a pin width so it's also idempotent this function This function is a no op. And we will say here node this function is item potent. If we don't have a bin with then we must basically do this so let's factor this out into a function histogram estimate and commit bin width let's check the invariant at beginning and end or uh, no I know that I think that does not make a lot of sense let's say this should only be called if pin width is yes yet is yet un, unknown And at the end, we will actually have a pin width. Then we don't need the invariant anymore. 
here. At least here locally, we don't need it. Uh, the one thing we can assert is that we must not, we must not yet have overflown the sample buffer. Uh, must not have been overrun already. Must not have been overrun already. So this is fine. This should always work, I think. We just could get a none here. What do we do if we get a none? And not a number. I think then if is none, I think something like that exists. Quantile. Then we just set the pin width to one. It doesn't matter. Because this this will only happen if we don't have enough samples. Actually, actually, let's make this even simpler. How, how many samples does the quantal estimation need? If you have no sample, it is a, not a number. Does it only need one sample? I think it only needs one sample. That's great. It only needs one sample. So, so actually, if this is only not a number, when we have no sample at all. Actually, this one, we cannot... Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong spot here. Um, this one. So the only way this can go wrong here is if we don't have any samples yet. And in this case, well, this is very simple. We just say the pin width is one and we are done because we also don't need to add anything to anything. The pins are initialized. That should be fine. There's nothing to do as we have no samples. And then we can actually assert that this is not a not a number and everything else should always work right and this we refer to this This all works, and now we can here we can actually query the invariant. Actually, now it's simpler because we can actually we do not need to exit here because we check the pin with here, so that's even simpler. That's nice. So we run into the invariant check on our own here. And let's put it right at the end so it's easier to see that this is an end post invariant. Could move this further up, but 
doesn't matter. I think we finally have rather clean code. We just need to commit function. If we have no bin width, yeah, we estimate it. Uh, sorry, we estimate it and we are done. That is an input function. And here we commit, yeah, that is nice. Add recorded samples to bins if that has not already been done. No, this is needed when a histogram with automatic bin width uh, adaptation is going to be read, read out before the sample booth has been completely filled. And here we will add a warning. Warning. This function will commit the histogram. See histogram commit if that has not already happened. I think we have something. We actually need to get rid of the defaults here because C++ does not like even correct redundant defaults for some stupid reason. So trend analysis we want to today. So we are already spending way too much time on this system stuff, but this will be so nice and useful and good. Um, and I will forever enjoy it afterwards. Let's compile something. Hey, do we have some strange magical character here somewhere? I don't see any non asti characters here. Maybe this one. Yeah, that was the one. I, I don't know why this sometimes happens that I get non asti stuff in my file. From in to double, okay. That is actually fine in this case. I am so looking forward to my sweet treat if this is working. Let's try it out. Let's give our histograms a sample buffer.
I should probably make a macro for easier declaration of histogram variables. Yeah, I definitely should do that because this is now going to be ugly. No. Yeah, that's not beautiful. So we definitely will need, but we can set this to zero now. That is beautiful. We can use our estimation. The only thing is that I just, I just came to my mind now that this estimation algorithm will, will give now different it will give different um, bin sizes to these different histograms. So that is something we will, we will want to deal with at some time, not, not today probably, that we can commit the first histogram and then copy its, its, uh, copy its bin width to the others or something like that. So many features that are nice to have in this stuff. Why, why, why so bad writing? Okay, what we did, we actually compiled, probably not the profile build, right? Because by default, make does the debug build. It is so quiet, nobody is chatting. Let's see. We are in profile here. Will this work? Do we have any chance of this working without debugging it? It does something. We have some strange pin widths going on as expected. Um, for my taste, there are too many values here. One third of the values, one third of the values is outside here. Uh, let's print some debug stuff when we do the adaptation. What do we want to know? We want to know the quantile. We want to know the span. And that's it, I think. Based on
actually is a sample n pairs. And let's run control span bin with fractional. That is a nice debug print, I think. I need some more T. Which one is the is the pin with the U int? Yeah, probably. Oh no, I needed to make profile. I need to make profile. What is that? Oh, okay, this is actually what we run here. Mm, at which point do we estimate the bin width? Probably only at the end, right? We have what? Oh, we have only 14 samples. Yeah, that's actually, that is correct. We have only 14. That is, that is right. We have only 14 samples. And eight of them, that's strange. Eight of them, there's something not right. Based on 14 samples, something is not right here. Quantile, the quantile is, oh, I can't read this, 300 million, 330 million, I can read this. 330 million, the span is larger. Yeah, and it ends up here. But this is... The maximum is so large. Our quantile estimation is not working, me thinks. This does not look like the 90% quantile. Also, afterwards, we have a much larger 90% quantile. That does not look correct. Have we made a mistake in the order statistic? That looks all correct. No. What is going on? 
why are our stats so bad? Um, oil statistics, 13, 14. Why does it look so much better now? Now it looks like I would expect. Why? No, this one looks bad. This one looks bad. Okay, we got a nun here. That's something. Okay, this has been probably estimated earlier and wrongly so maybe. Where is this estimated? Here, based on 50 or 50 samples, quantile or a statistic. There's something wrong. Very, 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 very wrong. This the forty-sixth order statistics can never be less than the forty-fifth one. That is wrong. What is going on here? What is going on here? These are wrong statistics. None of these cases should hit here. We should hit this one. I think we need to debug. And it's good that I bought the Remedy BG debugger. So we can have some more fun debugging than with Visual Studio. So, Uh, the problem is okay I still I will still open this oh I, I opened the wrong one I think okay. I just switch to profile with here profile it runs okay it runs um, now what, what do we do control oh no uh, I first need a breakpoint I don't need this assembly now we will probably need that later. I want to go to histogram. Let's break here. We are using Remedy BG. I hope it is working. Yeah, use a breakpoint. So let's watch histogram here. Oh, this has been. 
wall. What is going on? Has this been optimized away? That's not nice, Remedy. Has this been optimized away? Cannot read anything here. What is going on? Let's try the debug build. Let's try the debug build. Now we debug. We will be need to be more patient, which is a good thing because I will need more tea. So Piplinos and Piplonas. 
do we still have a stream going on here? Things looks, look much saner here in the debug build, so there was stuff optimized away, it seems. And maybe, I'm not sure, maybe there was still some incremental linking garbage left in the profile build. I'm not sure, because Remedy really does not like the incremental linking that the Microsoft tools do, you have to disable that. So, whatever. Oh, I already skipped the important part, I guess. This is, yeah, this is for sure too small, I guess. So, this is actually what we want to... No... That was stupid. I need to rerun this little thing. Sorry. No treat for me so far. No treat today. That correctness has gone away. Careful, careful, step inside. How many samples do we have? Should be 50, yes, 50. Okay, we did not hit this, these cases, that is fine. Uh, what is order? Forty five. That sounds reasonable. Step inside, careful, careful. So we want order. Okay, we don't have order here. Let's put order here order is 45 yeah we are in here that is fine so how does the sample buffer look does it look sane sorry Does the sample buff no does the sample buffer look sane? Yeah, these look like accumulated samples. Yes, yes, yes. Oh stupid, stupid, stupid me. I have not yet sorted the sample buffer. Oh my god. Oh my God. I have not yet sorted the sample buffer. Of course, they, of course the order statistics are wrong. Of course the order statistics are wrong. Yeah, we don't need to debug further. So stupid, but at least it did not take us too long to find it out. Right. 
So we will sort the sample buff. And I think I want a stable sort just to be completely reproducible in any case. Buff his sample buff plus his samples used. Um, import compare sam compare sample and n. Actually, I could even use a Q sort because if I compare both of sample and n, then we can make it then we can make it deterministic. Let's do a Q sort because I don't like templates so much. They always produce too much code. Not always, but often. User base normal size compare. Base num size. Actually, we can do this like this, right? Compare we probably need standard lib for that, right? I guess. Uh, this takes void point or void point. Oh, uh, this takes const. That is ugly. I hate const. So, I, uh, if the sample, that's the primary criterion, if the sample is smaller, then return minus one. else if the sample is equal then we return depends what we return if the n if the n is larger, so this will, will sort decreasingly, then we return minus one. Otherwise, if it is equal, then return zero, otherwise plus one. I somehow I want this differently. I think I want it like this. So if it is equal, 
So this is a nested thing. Could even put it here, maybe. Otherwise, plus one, right? It's maybe better here. So we have minus one, plus one, and the tiebreaker is this one. This is the tiebreaker. Syntax error. Because that and it shouldn't be a problem if we sort them multiple times, it's just slow, but correctness shouldn't suffer, right? Also, the Q sort probably is written in a way that for pre-sorted stuff it is relatively fast I guess so if they I hope I hope I get my treat now Yes, this looks so much better. And now I also understand why it did look differently because it depended on this on this on the order of how those things came in. This looks nicer. Yeah, this looks nice. This is so nice. Except for the very awkward numbers here. This is something that I Maybe at one point we want to change. Okay, here we have an outlier. We do have numbers that are comparable to what we got before. So I'm not, I'm not worried about the correctness now. I think it's time for a treat. <laughs> 